the numbers and data you need to pay attention to for your online course in this extra special nerdy numbers edition of the Rise to the Top podcast, starting right now. And welcome, my great and good friends. It's your great and good friend, David Simon Garland, a.k.a. DSG. I want to welcome you here to the Rise to the Top podcast. Today, we are talking numbers, talking data, right? Which is a word that can scare people sometimes, scares me sometimes, right? By the way, I'm just adjusting my microphone here because my three and a half year old wanted to come in to the home office today and start yelling into the microphone. So, We got her all adjusted and ready to go here for the podcast. Hey, listen, the benefits and the perils from working from home. I love working from home, but you know, there's there's challenges with that as well. I'll definitely do an upcoming episode where I'll talk about working from home and what I do and how it works and things like that. But today we're talking data. And it's interesting because I feel like people fall into two different categories when it comes to data. People that are obsessed with data every single piece of data obsessed and people that could kind of care less or don't know what to pay attention to or just data overwhelms them or the idea of it is stressing them out, right? So I'm kind of going to meet in the middle here today. I am definitely, when it comes to data, my philosophy is simple, 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 simple. And may I add in another one? Simple, right? (laughs) Because at the end of the day, there's numbers that matter and there's numbers that don't. And unfortunately, what I see a lot is people doing two things that can cause trouble. One is they focus on things that don't matter, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. So I talk about numbers that are basically irrelevant and have nothing to do with the growth of your business or the helping of your customers or anything like that. So that's, that's no good. And the second one is the comparison game. Trying to compare numbers to other people or data to other people, et cetera. Because here's the thing, and this is, this is so important, that there's all kinds of data we could talk about. So for example, conversion rate, which is how many people have purchased your course versus how many people have gone through, let's say, a sales funnel or landed on a sales page. So you've got conversion rate. You've got opt-in percentage, right? That's another piece of data. So the percentage of people that land on your opt-in or landing page enter their email address to get your free item That's a percentage, right? And then you have things like email open rates. So the emails that you send out, what percentage of people are opening them, et cetera. And the question I get all the time, and I totally understand this because we live in a very comparison-driven world, is people asking, what's your conversion rate? Or what's your opt-in percentage? Or what's your email rate? Or hey, my conversion rate is 1%. Is that good, bad, or ugly? My opt-in rate is 10%. Is that good or bad, et cetera, et cetera? And what I always tell people when it comes to those types of pieces of data, you cannot compare them to other people. The best person to compare them to is yourself, right? So really think about that. The only thing that matters is comparing that to yourself. So for example, if you do something and your opt-in percentage is 10% and then you change some things around and your opt-in percentage is now 12%, you're doing better, right? Comparing to other people is futile because everyone comes from all kinds of different backgrounds, different topics, different situations. There's a thousand variables that could make things like conversion rate, opt-in percentage, email open rates vary. There's a thousand different variables. It could be anything. When you started in business, how you built your email list, how well people know you, what your topic is, so many different things. Here's a good example of what this is like. Imagine if you just walked up to someone and said, how much should I bench press? Well, there's no generic answer. We, we can't say, well, 200 pounds, because we don't know. You might be a power lifter. You might weigh 90 pounds. We don't know. There's a major variance there. If you just ask someone, how much should I bench press? And I use that example when anyone asks me, what's a good conversion rate? And I say, well, that's very different. I know people that have conversion rates that are 15% for their online course that are doing great. I know people that have conversion rates that are less than 1% that are doing great because it's just all different. There's different variables, there's different factors, there's different things that go into it. So the first kind of major tip here when it comes to looking at data, don't get into the comparison game with anyone except yourself. Except yourself. Because if you start doing it out there and worrying about what other people are doing, you're going to end up in a big mind quaggle, 
Quaggle is not even a word, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll just go with that. Mind quaggle. All right. I don't know what that means. You get you get it. Sounds like it means something bad, right? You don't want to get into a mind quaggle. Okay. So let's talk about data that you should pay attention to. What you should pay attention to. Okay. Now, first of all, what I like to look at from a macro standpoint is the most important piece of data is going to sound so simple, but this is the number one thing I worry about and the number one thing I focus on is what's our weekly and monthly sales, period, right? So you should be paying attention to this, (laughs) your weekly and monthly sales. Now, what I do is every month, our operations manager, my operations manager, Lindsay, who is our rock star, right? One of our amazing rock stars on our team, Lindsay sends me a monthly data report, a monthly data report, and it breaks down every product and it breaks down every sale for each product. So for example, it might say, hey, create awesome online courses. We sold 98 last month. And for the most kick-butt webinar blueprint, we sold 15. And for create awesome Facebook groups, we sold nine. And what that revenue is, and the revenue is broken down into, let's say it's payment plans or full pay or whatever it might be. So Weekly and monthly sales are something that's very, very important. Now, why? Well, first of all, I can compare them month to month. I can get the big picture. And at the end of the day, that is what is the lifeblood of your business is your weekly and monthly sales. It's not about anything else. It's about your weekly and monthly sales. Now, we can start getting much more micro on that and talk about other numbers. But at the end of the day, it's quite simply about weekly and monthly sales. Now, what other pieces of data are important? Well, if you're doing live promotions of any kind, live promotions that you're doing to your email list and your people, joint venture promotions with partners or other things like that, you obviously want to know how many sales you made on a webinar or through a promotion and what percentage. So for example, you had 500 people sign up for something, you had 50 people purchase, that's X dollars, that's a 10% conversion rate. So that's something that we always are paying attention to as well. And it's funny, when we do webinars, joint venture webinars, they vary drastically depending on the person that's promoting for us. Some people, it's very high percentages. Some people, it's low. Some people have a big audience and have a smaller percentage of buying. Some people have a very small audience, but that audience is super engaged and they're perfect people, but get very high percentages. So it's all across the board, but I'm just looking at that data, but it all goes back to the total weekly and monthly sales. I want to worry about the whole pie, and that's what I would encourage you to as well, right? Another key piece of data to pay attention to is the amount of new email leads per month. And by the way, if you're, you're spending money for those leads via ads, what's your cost per lead? So how many new email leads per month and what is your cost per lead for those that are paid is obviously another piece of data. Why? Because the lifeblood of your business is that subscriber base in your audience as well, going along with your products. And finally, what I pay attention to is that I mentioned this in previous episodes. You can go back and check that out. Our amazing podcast editors, I'm sure, will put in a link to what episode it is. But I talked about something that we have called the super funnel. The super funnel is when you join our email list or when you're on my email list and you go through a series of free content and different promotions that go on for months and months and months and months to make sure that you're getting great free content and you're going to get great promotions for courses and workshops and things like that. So what I want to know, another piece of data, is the conversion percentage for each promotion in the super funnel. So why? Because if something's not working, we're going to take it out or change it around. So maybe a webinar on a specific topic isn't working. We might try to change, we might eliminate it or we might say, hey, you know what? Instead of a webinar, what if we take this and turn it into an article series? Or what if we take this and turn it into a video series? We're always kind of experimenting with those things by simply paying attention what is working and what is not in the super funnel, okay? And that's really it in terms of what I pay attention to and what I would encourage you to pay attention to. Weekly and monthly sales, sales on a webinar promotion and and what the percentage was, the amount of new email leads per month, and the conversion percentage of each promotion in our super funnel. And you might not have a super funnel, but that's that's kind of the last thing we pay attention to. From there, if you want to get crazy micro, you absolutely can and say, okay, well, how do we increase our weekly and monthly sales? Or how do we increase the amount of new email leads per month? Those are all extremely valid questions you want to ask, but it all goes back to those main 
pieces of data. See how fun that is? All right, little sip, little sip. I got the, you know what I'm probably drinking by now. If you listen to this podcast regularly, you know what it is. It's the triple espresso. Little sip of espresso. Now, what do I not pay attention to? And what do I encourage you not to pay attention to? Well, a few things. First of all, there's a lot of irrelevant numbers out there that people are obsessed with. Facebook likes, Facebook shares, Facebook likes on a fan page, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff is not relevant. It's just not relevant. If it was relevant, I would tell you so, and I would pay attention to it, but that stuff is not important. You know, we call these kind of vanity metrics. There's a lot of people out there, unfortunately, that get a lot of engagement on social media, but don't get sales because they're focused on that engagement and they're focused on what's going to get the most likes and comments and things like that and not what's going to result in sales. I can tell you for a fact that a lot of things that we put up on Facebook get barely any comments or or maybe no shares or anything like that, but they do draw people into our email list. They draw people to the podcast. They draw people to products in different ways. So I don't worry, and I encourage you not to worry about those crazy vanity numbers like social media numbers and likes and, and things like that. That's the number one thing that I think can hold people up because it takes the eye off of the prize, which is the weekly and monthly sales and also the amount of new email leads per month. Okay, amount of new email leads per month. So Facebook likes, social media numbers, end of the day, not super relevant. Back in the day, people were obsessed with this. And, you know, yes, they're, they're cool for different reasons. So first of all, if you're driving, if you're using social media well and driving people then to your email list, that's a great thing. That's, that's good. That's, that's what you should be doing, right? And social media, by the way, also provides some social proof. So if people come and see you on Instagram or Facebook and they see, oh, you've got, you know, great amount of followers, whatever it might be, there's great social proof, but just make sure that you don't obsess on those numbers. You have to look at the bigger picture of the pie. Now, by the way, is social media awesome and can you use it as amazing strategies to grow your email list and increase your sales? 100%. We're going to have a training coming up on that on Instagram specifically. We've got other ones as well. Great, awesome FB ads, or we actually we call it the Facebook ad machine, the Facebook ad machine, which you could check out. We'll link out below. Also, create awesome FB groups, right? If to do your own free Facebook group, social media is awesome, but you got to again picture the most important things when it comes to data, which is your weekly and monthly sales and your new leads per month. Now, there's some other numbers that I pay attention to a little bit, so not ignoring but not obsessing because as entrepreneurs, a lot of us are very type A. We're going to start obsessing on things. I know people that'll hit the refresh fresh button every single day on, on different things. Oh, by the way, before I even talk about that, I knew there was one more very important point I wanted to make here on my, I have a little outline. I, I know script out podcast shows, but I have a little outline. Okay. Here's one I don't pay any attention to. Unsubscribes. 0%. Don't even know. Wouldn't have a clue. No idea. How many people unsubscribe a month for me? Nor do I care because what I care about is the weekly and monthly sales <laughs> and the new leads, right? Don't care. I know, I know some people that obsess on this. They sit there and hit refresh and they worry about why are people unsubscribing or this or that. Who cares? Who cares? It could be for any reason. Don't worry about that. Keep your eye on the prize. Now, what are some numbers I pay a little bit attention to? Why I say a little bit is because, again, these could quickly become an obsession if you worry about it. So one is podcast downloads. I take a look maybe once a week at podcast downloads, and I like to see it kind of having an upward trend. But this podcast isn't about reaching 7 zillion people. If it reaches 7 zillion people, that's great. But this podcast is about reaching you. It's about reaching my customers and my future and ideal customers. That's what this podcast is about. It's not about reaching every single person. I'm not looking to be, you know, freaking Oprah or something, right? That's not what this is about. This is a very niche podcast on a very specific topic of courses and and growing audiences and things like that. And so that's one of the things for me. I, I want to make sure that we're we're doing you know well with our downloads. But it's not it's not anything that's I hate to say it like this all that important. Meaning I don't I don't obsess over iTunes rankings or anything like that. I kind of looked at them the first week we put the podcast out, and that's it because the podcast serves very different purpose 
for us. And it's not about being big and broad. It's about being specific and creating great content for my customers and also great content for potential future customers and people that might be joining us, whether it's with you know Create Awesome Online Courses or one of my other products and programs or software, whatever it might be, or just getting some great content. That's what it's all about. It's not about those crazy numbers. I also pay a little bit of attention to our free Facebook group numbers, which you could check out at joinrisenation.com if you want to join the free Facebook group. And it's been neat seeing, neat, what is this, 1956? It's been neat seeing those numbers increase every week. And now we're well over 1,000 members in there. That, that's continuing to grow as well in the Facebook group. So that, that's another key one. And then the final one that I really don't pay attention to, because this is really where my dad focuses. This is where my dad, Randy Garland, focuses in our business, is that he works on kind of the financial side and customer service side, working with payment plans and people with that and refunds and that kind of stuff. And so I don't really pay much attention to refund percentage. It it is in the monthly report that Lindsay sends to me. She'll kind of say, hey, here's the amount of products we sold. Here is the amount of refunds. I just kind of keep a one fifth eye on it, but I don't really worry about it at all because refunds are, again, part of the game. It's part of something that happens. Nobody likes refunds, but here's the thing is that by offering our very lenient refund policy that we have, which is 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee, not having people give us homework or their firstborn child or their blood type, what ends up happening is we end up with more customers overall because that's a very low-risk-to-you guarantee, right? Because if you, like, if you go in, check it out, you don't like it, you get a refund, right? And what we've realized, that's not increased refunds or done anything like that. It just gets more people in, which is great because I want people to try the products and programs and I want them to put it into action and stick with it. So I don't even really pay attention to refund percentage. Don't, don't really care, quite frankly, because I care about serving the people that want to be there. And other people that try it and it's not for them and they're out, that's fine. Move on, right? So I don't really obsess or worry about refund percentage. I keep a small eye on it because if it was something drastic, you know, I, I'd maybe have to evaluate that, but it's, it's never anything crazy, which is why it's not something that I really worry about. It's just I kind of keep, you know, like I said, one, one fifth of an eye on the refund percentage. And that's really it when it comes to data. I, I know that you might be thinking, oh my God, this is painlessly simple. And, and, that, and that's the truth. That's the truth. At the end of the day, and I remember this when I ran a mastermind group for one year, which was a great experience with some very high level course creators that were looking to either go from six to multiple six, six, multiple six to seven figures or seven figures and beyond. And I think somewhere, maybe one or two were in the very, very high figure. No, five figures. No, I think all, everyone was doing six figures pretty much in that group. But everyone was surprised about how much just focusing on weekly, monthly, and monthly sales and the amount of new email leads per month changed their business because it simplified all this data stuff. You know, instead of obsessing over every little tiny thing, you have to be thinking of the big picture on this. Now, if you hire someone or you have another team member that's that crazy data person or that's you that you love to get in and get every minutiae detail of data, that's fine if that's going to help you. But at the end of the day, Keep your eye on the big prize. And that is it, my friend. That, that is this entire episode about the numbers and data you need to pay attention to for your online course. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you find it simpler than you were even hoping, which is often the case with many of these things. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Now, a few reminders as always on the way out. Number one, if you haven't subscribed up to the podcast, what is wrong with you? Come on. Really, make sure to subscribe up. Go to the risetop.com slash subscribe. Lots of subscriptions options there, including iTunes, which is, of course, one of the most popular. You can also go directly to iTunes at the risetop.com slash iTunes. Brand new episodes of the podcast come out every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Time. And finally, you know what's coming here. Listen, if you haven't joined Create Awesome Online Courses and you are looking now to join the number one program in the world for creating, promoting, and profiting from your online course, make sure to check it out at createawesomeonlinecourses.com slash unlock, which is a special offer just for listeners of the Rise to the Top podcast. And by the way, 
whether you have an email list or you're starting from scratch or you've been around for a while or you're, again, starting with nothing, Great Awesome Online Course is going to walk you through everything from building an audience to growing an email list to how to create your course, how to market it, how to monetize. Everything that you possibly need to know is covered in there in one complete system with now nearly 5,000 students. So check that out at createawesomeonlinecourses.com slash unlock. And by the way, if you want some free training to get started and kind of help get your ideas together and check that out, that's at createawesomeonlinecourses.com. You can sign up for a free training to help walk you through the beginning of that system. All right, my friends, we'll see you next time. This has been David Simon Garland here on the Rise Stop Podcast. And remember, if you want some fluff, you know what to do. Go pet a bunny.